Hey, it's Jill, and today what we're going to make is a sweeper broom, but on a short stick. This is a stick that's been beaver chewed, and I found at the beach yesterday when I was at Lake Ponderé. So driftwood makes great handles. They just um, vary, of course, in size and thickness. But this is a, a actually it's a sweeper. I was thinking it was going to be a hearth broom, but it got a little bit big with a big handle, so it's more of a sweeper. So. This is what we're making in the studio today with Jill. Sticks. And uh, cool sticks that you can get. But, I mean, I'm lucky. I live around uh, Lake Ponderé, so I have the ability to get a whole lot of cool uh, driftwood sticks. And if you notice, this one has had beaver chew on it, and then it has this really wild kind of purple stain stuff on it. And it's got beaver chew on either end, so I'll have to make a decision which end that I want to use. And... Um, so that's a really awesome stick for a small one. And the other one I want to show you here is for a double broom. And that's one of the next projects we're going to do. Now this is split. But what I did is to make sure that it'll work. I can always thin this down some. But to make sure that's going to work, I took it and whacked it really hard on a sawhorse to make sure if it was going to bust, it would do it then. So I'm going to go ahead and use that for a double broom. But you, when you sand these up, you get some real awesome color that will really show when you put some varnish on them. So talk a little uh, quickly about how to prep your uh, broom handle. Remember this is uh, driftwood from Lake Ponderé and it has some cool beaver shoe on here. So what I did is I laid it down on the table to see how it would lay flat against the wall. And then I drilled my hole through here for the hanger to go on, okay? And because my hole's here, then my nail is perpendicular to that. And I have done my knot, and this is going to be my third row before I start putting in some broom corn. Um, and today, our broom corn is, or our broom is going to be with hurl on and we're going to do a hearth room. So what I'm going to do is take this uh, broom corn out of the water and kind of get it up here and get it ready. That way I can sort through what I've got. I want the short uglies on the inside because I'm going to be trimming those off and the long pretties on the outside. So that's kind of a long and pretty. That's a short. That's probably a short. That's a short. That's a short. This is a long. That's kind of short and ugly. That's a nice, long, thin, and pretty. Short and ugly. Short and ugly. That's a potential one. And the rest of those are all pretty short and ugly. So, I'm going to have to get some more gum cord. And I want to do that by adding one first. And then the rest of them by twos. And the reason that I do that is I want to make sure that I have an odd amount so that my uh, plating or braid works at the. Oh, goodness, just put them the right way. Um, when I'm doing the, the braid, it has to be an odd amount for it to work. And I'm going to um, loosen those up a little bit. You don't want those real tight in there. And one of the reasons is because when you pull on it, you kind of smudge it into the crease there. And then it tightens them up close together. So I'm going to go around here. underneath and place these guys in here give it a twist and you notice this is getting real thick and the reason for that is is um, that handle is pretty big to start off with so the bigger the broom Big hands help. Smaller the broom, less problem. Handle. Okay. 
So I've got about maybe four more. Oops, see how that snapped? We'll use that for something else later down the road. more, I think. Okay, so now we're going to wrap. See, it's pretty thick room. For about four, I think. And I can see that's where I started. So I can start pulling these down around. Remember, use that finger, and that's every other one. Give it a crease. Pull it over, give it a crease, down, around, give it a crease. Okay, so if I've done this right, like the sound of that, um, I should be able to do a continuous weave here. All right, and we're on. So I'll keep going around here, and I'll save you the boredom of watching me do it as long as I can I can only weave to the shortest amount here so I'll wait till I get to the end of that and then I'll show you what You notice that I had a little pop up here. What I'll do is I'll wait till that completely dries and then I can just pop that off. So I need to put in my jerk string. And remember, I'm right handed so the knot goes to the right because that's the way I'm pulling. And I'll lay that down there flat and I'm going to go around this for about three to four times. One. See, I'm beating up my ground point. Two. Third one. And we'll call that good. So, I'm going to cut that, hold that tension, take the end of what I just cut feed it through the loop on the left hand side because I'm going to be pulling with the right hand side and pull and then you want to tighten that up by going around something it doesn't have to be this and pulling it tight and then you can trim off that axis so I want to trim this stuff off here all the way around now you can use broom saws they're called and cut the stuff off too but not an exacto works just fine for what i'm doing okay so i'm going to do that all the way around a vise and this actually because i did two two uh, rounds um, this large of a diameter of a broom handle it actually got to be a little bit bigger than I had anticipated. And that's okay. Um, it'll still make a nice broom. But it's more of a sweeper than it is a hearth broom. And it really doesn't matter if you're doing a sweeper or a hearth broom. They're um, 
they're done the same way. The difference is, is that a sweeper, of course, is a little bit bigger. Okay, so we are ready to sew this down. I kind of want to do two or three rows of this. I'm kind of excited to find out what's going to happen when I put some varnish on that handle. And I don't know what causes that. I mean, I do know what causes a beaver to, but I don't know what causes that really cool purple. It must be some kind of algae in the water that reacts to that, that particular tree, because it's not on all the driftwood, it's just on some of the driftwood, which makes it kind of cool. So, I've wrapped it. So we're going to sew a couple of rows on this, and this is the same as any any flat broom, so a hearth broom or a shaker broom, same thing. Just want to make sure when you're doing it that you uh, keep it tight and you make your stitches about a fourth of an inch apart. And we're going to do two different rows of these. I'm going to take it, I've got it sewed down, and I'm going to take it off the vise. And then all I really need to do is decide whether I'm going to give it a haircut or I'm going to let it be the wild thing. So yeah, that is a, more like a broom than it is a, or a sweeper than a hearth broom. But I think what I'll do is I will... Just give that a wild and wooly haircut with some scissors and trim that up a little bit. And once I put the varnish on this and all that really cool color and um, beaver chew comes out, this will be a really pretty broom. Now, one thing, like I said, that popped on me when I was weaving it. When this completely dries, you can pop that up and it won't affect the weave at all and it'll come right off there. If you try to cut it now while it's wet, not so much. Hey, it's Jill. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and like our videos and subscribe. That way you're always updated on anything basket related that we have on our Jill Show Basketry channel. You won't miss a thing. Please like us and subscribe. See you next time.